I love homebrewing items even when it's not necessary, and I especially love homebrewing the really powerful artifact level items. In my campaign, there are a collection of items referred to as the planar shards, which were made with magic of another plane. The item we're going to discuss today is a bow which was formed of the bow of a tree connected to the Feywild. The bow, which I just call the bow of hunting, is a plus three bow. It requires attunement, and if the bow is more than ten feet from you, while you are attuned to it, then you are blinded, because artifacts should have trade-offs. Once per long rest, you can cast Fairy Fire and summon Fae. While attuned to this item, you can use a bonus action to speak a command word and mark an enemy within sight as your desired prey. This is the powerful ability for this item. You can do this once per short rest, and the creature remains your desired prey until you designate another prey, take a rest, or kill the prey. When a creature is your desired prey, you have advantage on all attacks against this enemy. You do an extra 3d6 piercing damage when you hit this enemy with an attack. Your desired prey has disadvantage on attacks against you. If the creature is within 1,000 feet of you, then you know exactly where it is and it cannot benefit from being hidden from you. And if the creature is further than 1,000 feet away from you, but is on the same plane, then you know which direction it is. Besides the desired prey feature, if the bow is attuned by a ranger or someone else deeply connected to nature or the Feywild, then they gain the following benefits. Their dexterity increases by 2 to a maximum of 24, and if you do not already have proficiency in survival in nature, you gain it. If you do already have proficiency in survival in nature, then you gain expertise. Let's talk a little about this item. First, this is a very powerful item, and you should not give it out to a low-level party. This is a high-level item for high-level play against powerful, world, or at least continent-threatening bosses. In part, some features of this exist because I wanted to make a ranger in my world more effective. That, in part, is what the creature deeply connected to nature or the Feywild was meant to accomplish. And also, there was only one character in the party who regularly used a bow. A fighter that got their hands on this with the desired prey feature is going to do tons of damage with action surge and the extra attacks. A gloomstalker with their extra attacks is going to do a lot of damage. Be sure you are ready for that. 3d6 damage on every attack is a lot. But also, remember the flame tongue weapons get 2d6 on every attack, and Holy Avenger gets 2d10 on every attack. So is 3d6 that crazy? Haste also makes this bow even more powerful because, of course, you're getting another attack. However, in my campaign, with the power output and abilities of the party, this item worked. If anything in the game deserves to be a plus three weapon, it's an artifact formed from the Tree of Ancients, where the elves first crossed over from the Feywild. If it's a bow of hunting, which it is, then it needs to make you really good at hunting. And I love the idea of a ranger finally coming in range of their legendary foe and marking them. However, they break a stick and the creature bolts deep into the forest. The, the ranger, though, still knows where that creature is and keeps tracking it, potentially pushing on without rest to keep the track active. That last part I want to emphasize again, potentially pushing on without rest to keep the track active. I love the idea, in play, of the ranger marking their prey. Let's say a high-level lich, who then teleports away, and now you have a chase across the plain, with the ranger having to push on without rest as they try to keep the location of their prey on their mark. The lich teleports away, the druid in the party casts Windwalk, and the ranger leads in the direction of the lich, pulled on by their desire to make this prey pay. A couple hours later, the lich has had a short rest, but the party arrives, surprising them again. The lich throws out some high damaging area of effect spells, maybe cloud kill, maybe something else, and then teleports away again. However, the party presses on, the ranger not being able to get a rest, still inexorably drawn towards their prey. The party arrives again, 
The Lich has depleted most of their high-level spells, and the party now has them truly cornered. I think playing with Ress in this way makes for a really fun dynamic, especially if this chase ends up taking more than a day and levels of exhaustion start stacking up. Last thing I want to mention, in my world items like this can be used as a tuning fork for plane shift, so the bow of hunting can take you to the Feywild. I also want to talk just briefly about how my players got this item. One of my favorite ways to give out items to my players is to use them against them. My players betrayed their employers, the Zentrum, and the Zentrum put the largest bounty in the world on the heads of my players. On the heads of my players' characters, I should say. My players are fine. This bounty was enough to convince a legendary hunter, the one who currently wielded the bow, to decide it was worth trying to hunt the party. Hiding deep in the forest, they marked their prey and quickly sent off a series of attacks which downed one of the characters in the very first round. This then led to a several round race through the woods, with the hunter repeatedly trying to hide and the players trying to hunt them down until they finally ended up taking them out after they surrendered. But hey, I'm running an evil campaign. Characters gotta do evil things. This was the first of the planar shards the party was able to obtain. And actually the first time they had seen one after several missions where they had seen the impacts of other ones, but not the artifacts themselves. I think it's way more exciting to get an item when you have felt it used against you. So many of my adventure bosses have the items that the players are looking for. What's better, fighting a mummy lord who defends a powerful sword of legend, or to find a mummy lord wielding the powerful sword of legend and turning its powers against your party? This often requires updating a stat block a little, but really helps make the boss combats feel more powerful and more interesting. Anyways, what do you all think about this item? Balance-wise, additional abilities you would consider adding, how it might fit in your campaign. And thank you, of course, for tuning in.